I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Chris Claremont and John Burns' The Dark Phoenix Saga has all the necessary narrative tools to be turned into a proper live-action adaptation. Whether you're a Marvel or DC fan, most comic book aficionados can agree that it's one of the most important arcs of the genre and a turning point for the uncanny X-Men. It could very well be the Avengers Endgame of the X-Men films, but the ball has been dropped on this not just once, but twice. The writers behind 2006's X-Men The Last Stand, Simon Kinberg and Zach Penn, tried to shoehorn in the Dark Phoenix saga into a movie with a runtime of 104 minutes and more characters in love actually. Yeah, I know. They're not ready, Storm. This left us with our first wasted opportunity. It takes only the slightest tap to tip it in the wrong direction. But 20th Century Fox, before their marriage with power player Disney, got a second chance when they took the X-Men back to the beginning. 2011's X-Men First Class served as an origin story of sorts for some of our favorite mutant characters, and it put some respect back on the X-Men name after The Last Stand. This was followed with an even more well-received entry, 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past. Perhaps getting too big for their britches, 2016's X-Men Apocalypse took things down quite a few notches, but the film would hint at the franchise tackling the Dark Phoenix saga once again. How would they make this one better? What bold move would they take? They chose Simon Kinber, who co-wrote the first failed attempt at adapting the story for The Last Stand, to be the sole screenwriter for 2019's Dark Phoenix. The questionable decision making doesn't even stop there. 20th Century Fox also decided Simon Kinberg should make this his feature directorial debut. Perhaps they thought director Brett Ratner and co-writer Zach Penn were the real culprits behind The Last Stand not completely working. Whatever the case may be, Dark Phoenix was released to dismal reviews, poor box office, and it left many of us X-Men fans scratching our heads wondering, why can't they get the story right? Ah! Let's dive into it and figure out, what the f*** happened to this movie? Dark Phoenix should have been in a pretty sweet spot for success. One of the many things that Days of Future Past did right was that it vaporized the events of The Last Stand from the series timeline. That's right folks, the quality of X-Men The Last Stand was so subpar that they decided to give it the Men in Black treatment and neuralize it from our memories. Kinberg, who apparently used most of his screenwriting mojo penning Days of Future Past, saw an opportunity to revisit the Dark Phoenix saga now that it had been erased from the franchise canon. His hope was to be more faithful to Chris Claremont and John Byrne's source material since his previous attempt at it, with writer Zach Penn, was met with mixed reactions. Even Kinberg and Penn were said to be unimpressed with the final product of The Last Stand. Thanks for watching Joe Blow Videos. If you enjoy our shows, please like and subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new videos go live. Now, back to the show. The new adaptation was confirmed in 2016 to be a follow-up to X-Men Apocalypse, a film that should have been our first sign that Kinberg may not have been the right guy for this. Apocalypse features Sophie Turner as Jean Grey, tackling a role originally played by Famke Janssen, and we're not given much time to really care about her evolution or her using the full extent of her powers because she's one of several, quote, new faces in an already bloated ensemble. In a scene during the film's climax, James McAvoy's Xavier begs Jean to unleash the full strength of her powers, which results in her destroying Apocalypse. It's a moment that tells us Jean can maybe go mental if she uses her abilities unchecked, but we wonder why we should care because we spent all of 10 minutes with Jean Grey. Don't let a lack of an emotional connection to the main character stop you from attempting to adapt, once again, one of the best comic book stories of all time. Just soldier on to Dark Phoenix. We'll uh, figure it out as we go. It would not be difficult, my Fuhrer. In addition to Sophie Turner's Jean Grey, Apocalypse introduced us to several younger versions of several characters from the X-Men films to give them a new origin story. Storm, Cyclops, and Nightcrawler were brought back into the fold with the intention of having them carry on in their own films. As we've learned from many tentpole releases, intentions can only be met if money can be made, and 20th Century Fox began having concerns due to the critical and financial underperformance of Apocalypse. Brian Singer, who returned to the X-Men family to direct Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, would not be returning to helm the next installment. 
We were told back then that they just wanted to press the reset button and try something new creatively. But it has since become public knowledge that Singer was becoming quite problematic to say the least. It also needed to be addressed that the contracts for McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, and Nicholas Holt had expired from the previous trilogy. Kinberg optimistically wrote a new script with their characters still in mind, but it wasn't a sure thing. In February 2017, it was revealed that Kinberg was also a top choice to direct the film, making it his feature directorial debut. Fox was high on his involvement, and it was ultimately why McAvoy, Fassbender, Lawrence, and Holt agreed to sign on for one more installment. I've wanted Simon to direct for years, if I'm honest. He's a director who's always liked acting, and he's fascinated by it, and he understands it on a level that not every director does. They all have a very tight relationship with Kinberg, and one to support his transition to directing a film in a franchise he has been part of in one way or another as a producer or writer for many years. He knows all these characters so well. He knows the film so well. I was very excited when I heard that he was going to come on and direct this one. I, I feel like he's definitely earned it. This is probably the nicest part of the film's soon-to-be-troubling journey to the big screen. It's very clear that the ambition behind Dark Phoenix was much more elaborate than the film we ultimately received. When Kinberg began writing the film in 2016, the movie was to act as an introduction into how Jean becomes the Phoenix and how it affects her mental health. There were also signs that Kinberg intended to make the film a closer adaptation of the source material. Concept art revealed that, originally, the movie was to feature the return of Emma Frost, played by January Jones in First Class, and a new version of the Hellfire Club, who were featured in Claremont and Byrne's original story. The Hellfire Club was used in First Class, with Kevin Bacon most notably playing Sebastian Shaw, so they couldn't exactly use the same group from the story in the comics. The new members were to be Harry Leland, Friedrich von Rome, Fenris, Shinobi Shaw, and the Red Lotus Gang. The idea was eventually scrapped and the Hellfire Club were replaced by the Scrolls as the film's villains during a rewrite. Showing how much the script changed over time, they were then replaced with the Dabari after reshoots. This would prove to be a sign of things to come for Dark Phoenix. Rewrites and reshoots would eventually become a behind-the-scenes character themselves. The role that the aliens play in the story was still slightly based on the Hellfire Club, with Jessica Chastain's character of the book being inspired by both Mastermind and Emma Frost. Kinberg's hope with Dark Phoenix was to make something bold, and he made frequent references to doing something that changed the game like Deadpool or Logan. Ah, right up Main Street! Perhaps the first mistake is trying to make a film that feels like something else. There was so much comic book product being pushed out at the time that it became so much more important to do the next Logan rather than creating the first of something truly special. In Kinberg's pitch to the studio, the director used real-world imagery, such as natural disasters, and focused on an approach that was much more grounded because there were criticisms about the fantastical route used for X-Men Apocalypse. This could have very well been Kinsberg's plan, but I think we'll begin to see that the intentions weren't particularly on the same page as the studio. We're already finishing each other's dinner. Sentences. Principal photography began on Dark Phoenix on June 28, 2017 in Montreal, Quebec, with the aforementioned returning cast members as well as the return of Alexandra Shipp as Storm, Ty Sheridan as Cyclops, Evan Peters as Quicksilver, and Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler. The film's script was said to have been much closer to the original Dark Phoenix saga, but it's obvious from what we got that it didn't get quite close enough. In some ways, it is more in line with Claremont and Byrne's original work, much more than The Last Stand was. The mutant cure in the third film isn't even a part of the original narrative of the Dark Phoenix saga, so that was thankfully dropped here, and the focus is primarily on Jean and how her growing uncontrollable powers are making her a danger to her friends and the universe at large. Well, he went a little funny in the head. You know, just a little funny. We have the bones of the story, but not the body. That's mostly because the saga is too epic for one film. To properly tell the story, we need to see Jean become Phoenix and then see her gradually be consumed by the power that's far greater than her. This isn't something that can be properly done with just one entry. Patience. Patience, my love. As Dark Phoenix begins, we meet Jean Grey as a child. 
Her powers show the first signs of needing to be tamed when they cause a car accident that kills her mother and nearly does the same with her father. Xavier takes her to the school for gifted children following the tragic accident. Eventually, Jean grows up and she is now played by Sophie Turner as a member of the X-Men, alongside her boyfriend Cyclops and friends Mystique, Beast, Storm, Quicksilver, and Nightcrawler. Even though mankind has been shown to despise most mutants across all the films, the X-Men are somehow entrusted by the president to head into space on a job to save the crew of a failed shuttle mission that's been damaged by a mysterious solar flare. I must confess, you have an astonishingly good idea there, Doctor. The mission begins smoothly enough, but things begin to go wrong and Jean is suddenly attacked by the solar energy. The X-Men fear that they have lost their teammate, but Jean proves powerful enough to absorb the energy and survive the experience. When they arrive back on Earth, everyone is safe, but Jean is now very different. Her powers are enhanced and she has very little control over them. The power becomes so strong that she becomes a danger to her friends because there's a darkness in this energy that seems to be consuming her. Meanwhile, the cosmic event has gotten the attention of a mysterious alien named Vuk, and it's clear that she wants to use that power for more nefarious deeds. With nowhere left to go, Jean eventually happens upon Magneto, who's trying to live his own peaceful existence. But her arrival gets him entangled once again with the X-Men and at odds with how to handle Jean as she grows stronger. As you can tell, there are shades of the original story, but Kinberg has stated that he wanted the film to be more human and emotional, meaning he wanted less spectacle from a narrative that takes place partly in outer space in the original source material. In fact, Kinberg wanted his adaptation not to be, quote, too intergalactic. Sensing that fans felt that comment meant he was straying from the source material, Kinberg later clarified the film would still include alien characters, as in the comic storyline, but ones he felt were important to the story. He also wanted the film to be more relatable to audiences, but it seems as if his intentions got muddled by trying to do too many things. It's hard to make something more grounded when the very essence of the story is grander and spans the galaxy in the source material. Much like Jean Grey, Kinberg's take on Dark Phoenix was experiencing its own mental instability. Most of Dark Phoenix's issues began during post-production. In December 2017, Kinberg revealed that the film would be in post for nearly a year, far longer than usual for the series. Kinberg wanted to take the time to have the visual effects look just right by focusing less on the scale of them. Again, great intentions, but by March 2018, it became harder to hide that the film was experiencing more than just issues with visual effects. It was at that time that Fox delayed the film's release, pushing it back from November 2nd, 2018 to February 14th, 2019. Fox explained that this was done for the studio and Kinberg to schedule some routine reshoots for the film after receiving feedback from audiences during a test screening. The busy schedules of the cast on other projects reportedly made it quite difficult to reschedule the reshoots which meant that the cast couldn't get together for the project until August or September 2018. This wouldn't leave them with enough time to complete post-production work on the additional scenes, most notably with the visual effects, before the November 2018 release date. Reportedly, Kinberg wanted to specifically rework the film's third act, and he began rewriting parts of the script ahead of the reshoots. During this period, the film was said to be under budget and with planned reshoots costing less than $10 million to complete. In an attempt to save face, Kinberg said that the studio was considering changing the film's release date for a while before it was officially announced to avoid competing with The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. The new February release date was said to be ideal because the film would be opening away from other studio films, and it could get a boost from opening over President's Day weekend, a move that paid dividends for both Deadpool and Black Panther. At the end of April 2018, a Fox panel at the 2018 CinemaCon revealed the first logo for the film, and it did not include X-Men in the title, but merely a circle around the X in Dark Phoenix. The logo was compared a bit unfavorably by some to the one used for the X-Files movie released back in 1998, which also happened to be made by Fox. The studio later confirmed that the film would be simply called Dark Phoenix in the United States and X-Men Dark Phoenix for international releases. By August, the planned reshoots were expected to take place in Montreal over two and a half weeks, but the Quebec Film and Television Bureau let it slip that reshoots would take up to three months to complete. The film's first trailer was released to mixed notices, 
with Graham McMillan and Aaron Couch of The Hollywood Reporter citing it looked too similar to X-Men The Last Stand, something Kinberg and his team were actively trying to avoid. The Hollywood Reporter said, quote, this could have been avoided if the trailer showed more of the film's space and alien elements, which would have made it evident the movie was different from The Last Stand. In a direct critique to Kimberg's more human and grounded approach, Forbes called the trailer, quote, dull, and said that the focusing on the characters rather than the big effects or action was a huge risk by Fox. You need to face it, come on, admit it to me right now, come on. The film's trailer was watched a mere 8 million times within 24 hours on Fox's YouTube channel, but received 44 million views within the same time period in China, which led the studio to refocus the film's release date again. I'd rather go out with the fish. Shortly after the release of the film's first trailer in September 2018, Fox delayed the movie's release again, pushing it from February 14, 2019 to June 7th of the same year. I had to make adjustments. This date was said to be a better time to release the film in China, since the trailer received more attention there than it did in the US. That seems like a bit of a reach, especially since several spots had aired with the February date, and now those would have to be pulled and redone with a June date. What did you do to her, Charles? Maybe it's just too many cooks, but it was beginning to seem like the powers that be didn't really know what to do with Dark Phoenix. There were also reports that the move was made in a bid to please director James Cameron, because he had Alita move from December to February. Cameron didn't want to compete with another potential Fox blockbuster, and considering he's James Cameron, we can see this being true. To their credit, Kinberg and the Dark Phoenix producers opposed the change because the film wasn't made for a summer release and would face even tougher competition. As marketing changes escalated, some press estimated that Fox spent around $90 million promoting the film. This doesn't include the film's budget and the added expenses due to reshoots that ultimately ran longer than expected. In further proof that things were looking pretty bad for Dark Phoenix, in March 2019, Vanity Fair ran a report that the film faced promotional issues because long-term employees on the Fox marketing team had been laid off after Fox merged with Disney. According to a Fox marketing executive, quote, we know when we are dropping a trailer, but we are nowhere near where we should be at this time. It's frightening. I would be mad if I were a filmmaker. <laughs> Following the film's release, similar reports surfaced via other publications. The Hollywood Reporter stated that Based on an NRG tracking poll taken in May 2019, Dark Phoenix had lower awareness rates than any other film in the series. Deadline also reported that their sources had been hearing that the film's marketing campaign had been in disarray since February of that year. Disney reportedly tried integrating the film into their marketing department, but they didn't have enough time. Despite all the issues, Dark Phoenix was finally released on June 7, 2019, after seeing its budget balloon to a massive $200 million, not including marketing spend. Ahead of its release, the film was tracking to open between $50 and $60 million and ahead of The Secret Life of Pets 2. When the film pulled in just $14 million on its opening day, it became clear that the Pets sequel would top the box office. It's snow time! and Dark Phoenix would settle for second and much lower than expected opening. Expectations were dropped to $34 million for the opening weekend, but the film ultimately placed second with $32.8 million, marking the lowest opening weekend total of any film in the franchise, and the first time an X-Men film didn't top the box office the week of its release. The film's cinema score of B- is also the lowest of the franchise, and indicated the movie would not have legs in the weeks ahead. During its second weekend, the film fell 71.5% to $9.4 million, and during its third weekend, it was pulled from 1,667 theaters, grossing just $3.5 million in the process. By the end of its domestic box office run, the film grossed a dismal $65.8 million. Remember the release date shift to give it some push in China? That didn't work out so much either. The film grossed just $45.6 million in China, not nearly enough to justify the change. I think this is not as much fun as I thought it would be. Worldwide, Dark Phoenix grossed $252.4 million on a $200 million budget, and Deadline reported that due to the film's budget, 
reshoots, and promotional costs, the net loss of the film was a staggering $133 million. Reviews didn't help either. The film is very rotten on Rotten Tomatoes with a score of just 22% and a consensus that reads, Dark Phoenix ends an era of the X-Men franchise by taking a second stab at adapting a classic comics arc with deeply disappointing results. The complaints were all over the place, but a lot of it came down to the film being just an average superhero movie. We're living in the age of the MCU where everything is bigger and better. Dark Phoenix felt almost like a relic from the past, and despite a huge budget, a lot of the effects don't look like they have evolved. Critics were also let down by the film's quality despite the movie's solid ensemble cast. There were some really good performers on display, but they weren't serviced by the film's story. To say that most of them are wasted would be a vast understatement. We should give credit to Sophie Turner, however, who overcomes most of the film's shortcomings with a committed performance that's far better than the material she was given. We should also give Kinberg credit for taking the hit over the failure of Dark Phoenix. In response to the film's poor reception, Kinberg stated, quote, I'm here. I'm saying when a movie doesn't work. Put it on me. I'm the writer-director. The movie didn't connect with audiences. That's on me. Never missing an opportunity to kick a movie when it's down, Dark Phoenix was nominated for two Razzie Awards, but didn't, uh, quote-unquote, win either of them. The film was nominated in the category Worst Prequel, Remake, ripoff or sequel, and Jessica Chastain was nominated as Worst Supporting Actress. The film lost to Rambo Last Blood and Rebel Wilson in Cats, respectively. <laughs> Due to the film's critical and financial failure, along with the Fox merger with Disney, a planned sequel for the film was eventually canceled. In May 2016, Kinberg said that Dark Phoenix would be the first in a new trilogy that focused on the younger versions of the original X-Men. However, after the Fox-Disney merger was announced in 2017, Disney CEO Bob Iger said that any future X-Men films would be produced by Marvel Studios and as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This would mean that Dark Phoenix and the also maligned The New Mutants would be the last films in the Fox-produced franchise. Early plans for Dark Phoenix had it initially set up as a two-film story to be filmed back-to-back. -back. This was changed in pre-production when the studio decided to only produce one film with the prequel cast as the higher-ups didn't want more X-Men movies set in the past after the mixed reception of X-Men Apocalypse. There were still some plans for a sequel that continued the Phoenix story that would also coincide with a crossover with the New Mutants, but those plans were also cancelled after the merger. Footage was removed from both Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants films that had been intended to be expanded upon in sequels. Visual effects supervisor Greg Butler also revealed that the film was meant to be more cosmic, although that aspect of the movie wouldn't have been revealed until the second film. Jessica Chastain's character was originally going to be part of the Shi'ar alien race in earlier takes of the story, but the actress herself admitted that her character kept changing and she added that she didn't even know her character's name until she would see the movie. Chris Claremont is another name that confirmed the two-film plan when he revealed that film one would center on Jean as Phoenix, and film two would center on her transition to the Dark Phoenix. Basically, how things should have gone down in the first place. But the only creatives that seem to get this are the minds behind the 90s X-Men animated series, which actually got this story right. It's hard to say where Dark Phoenix's legacy goes from here. In retrospect, some of the reaction has been a tad more favorable since its initial release, but it's still considered a blemish on comic book movies. Look, it's no Elektra or Catwoman by any means, and it does feature a few scenes that do work. You get to hear Cyclops drop the film's only F-bomb, and the film's third act, despite being massively reshot, is more competent than it has any right to be. Maybe the big lesson we can learn from Dark Phoenix is that it's best not to stray from the source material. I have faith in Simon, I trust Simon, I trust especially the acting team he has built up. If you're going to do the Dark Phoenix saga, do it as it was meant to be and don't compromise the narrative. It's a purely rich story that doesn't really need to be changed as it transitions to the big screen. If there's any chance of making this brilliant, these are the people who can pull it off. Now that the X-Men are with the MCU, maybe we can explore this story again in the future. And the third time will hopefully be a charm. No. Let us know your thoughts. Leave a comment in the comments and thanks for watching.